Hello, my name is Mike Perlack and I'm the founder of Staking University. Staking University is located about an hour's drive south of downtown Chicago. So I want to talk about how locating instruments are used in the United States. One of the biggest reasons to use locating instruments is to comply with the state's damage prevention law. All 50 states have damage prevention laws, and they're all similar while none of them are exactly the same. An excavator in the United States who is going to dig legally will notify what's known as a one call center before they do. And generally, the excavator has to wait two, three, sometimes more than three days, depending on the state, to wait for marks. And what are marks? Marks are paint, flags, sometimes stakes, that tell the excavator where gas, electric, telecommunications, water and sewer lines are located. Locates that are performed by one call locators do not locate all the pipes and cables in any given area. We have what are called private utilities, and these are underground pipes and cables that don't fit into the notion of public utilities, and public utilities are the ones that have to be part of the one call system. Sometimes an electric meter may be on a pole, and the pole's in the right of way, but the cable leaving the meter going to the house is private. It's not owned by the electric company. So we call it a private utility and that underground electric line wouldn't be located with a one call request. So we have a business in the United States and industry known as private locating. And there are companies that can be hired to locate all the private lines. They can also be called upon to double check the markings that are put down in the one call process by the public utilities. But how else are instruments used? They're used by excavators who will double check the one call marks or to do private utility locating themselves. So that takes some of the non-one call locating pie. Also, we have a, uh, an industry known as subsurface utility engineering in the United States, or SUE, subsurface utility engineering, S-U-E. And SUE is a, a discipline of engineering that involves getting records, doing locates, and actually potholing so that you can lay eyes on underground pipes and cables. Taking all this information and putting it together in one, one map, one platform, if you will, where this information will be utilized in the design of roads or new bridges or new arenas or new sewer systems, whatever the project is, that could benefit from knowing the exact location of all the uh, private and all the public lines in a particular area, then this is a sort of function that subsurface utility engineering is engaged in. We talked about excavators using instruments to double check one call marks and to locate private lines. And they'll also use instruments to get depth estimations before they dig because the one call doesn't provide depths. It's only lateral location information with the painting and the flagging of one call or 811 locating. So we have the excavator side and their usage of the instruments. We talked about private locating companies and why those companies would be hired to provide their locating services. And then we talked about subsurface utility engineering, which is project-based. So by the time you add it all up, the number of one-call locating personnel in the United States is probably somewhere around 20,000 individuals. Um, it, it's hard to say exactly 
because we have what is called a contract locating market. And this is when the utility companies in an area hire one company to do the one call or 811 locating. And we kind of know that there are about a maximum of 13, 14,000 of contract locating trucks out running around the United States today. And some utilities do their own locating. So we have to estimate somewhat the number of people who are working for the utility and only part of the day is locating and another part of the day is some other function. So all in all, we come up with a number around 20,000, maybe a little more to do one call locating in the United States. There's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 5,000 individuals who do locating for most of the time that they're at work in the private utility Sioux engineering and surveying businesses. So now that puts the number up to 25 to 26,000 people who do locating on a daily basis in the United States. However, with technology today, it's probably going to happen pretty soon in the future to see that anybody who locates is going to have the ability to collect information. The big problem here in the United States is where does that information go? Nobody has any idea right now who's going to run that repository. Where is that information going to go? It, it, it resides right now with the utility that did the locating. And there is no sharing of locating information or mapping information in the United States to any great degree. So for the prospect of getting X, Y, and Z coordinates while you locate, no matter why you're locating, and then being able to upload those to a cloud, a repository somewhere where other people can get that information, can share in that information, it's not happening right now in, in the United States. And that's because it's a, it's a cultural challenge. We're not used to sharing information with other utilities with other professional excavators, but it's going to happen because technology is going to force it to happen. And when it does, we'll end up seeing a brand new market. And that's going to be the contract locating market for mapping information. The first commercial locator in the United States was called a Fisher M-Scope. And this isn't it, but Gerhard Fischer, who was a German immigrant, developed the first commercially available pipe and cable locating system in 1937. And these are the instruments that we use outside in our field classroom. We have donations from all the major manufacturers. We do not sell instruments. We do not give recommendations on instruments. We simply teach people how their instrument works and more importantly, how to use it. Because all these instruments work on the same principle. So anything we tell you about the green machine will apply to this yellow and black machine as well. So all the machines work on the same principle even though on the surface sometimes it looks like the instrument has features that make it different from other instruments. And to some degree, it's true that an instrument can give you a different piece of information than other instruments, but it's literally just a matter of where the antennas are and how many they have on the receiver. It's still working on the same principle. Sometimes, depending on what you do, an instrument like this is a better choice than the more expensive locating instruments. This is used a lot in the oil field right in front of the excavation looking for pipes that they have no idea exist. So we want the student who comes to Staking U to get an understanding of what's available out in the market. 
But our focus and what we'll be doing with you is the electromagnetic locating instrument. The transmitter, the receiver, and the metallic pipe or cable.